Hi everyone.、Um, my name is Zhao Jiawei, and I'm a distributed storage engineer from Dayton Law. And today's topic is about the Kamada and X Line, the early exploration、uh, and practice of managing stable、uh, applications across cluster. And the main content is about the X Line's、uh, early exploration of、uh, managing stable applications on the multi-cluster. Uh, manage uh, platform Kamada, and here's the main content、uh, shared today,、uh, which can be divided into four parts in total.、Uh, at the very beginning,、uh, we will、uh, introduce the background and the motivation of these sharing sections, and followed by the challenges and the status quo, and、uh, then the early exploration, and finally.、Uh, Summary. So, uh, let's first uh take a look at the background and motivation. The reason for exploring uh this area uh are both ex external and internal. So let's start with the uh external factors, and the chat on the left. Uh, is from the Flex Arrows Cloud report, and which survey and compile uh compile the data from hundreds of tech companies to uh identify the trends in uh cloud computing for twenty twenty three. As we can see uh in this report, over eighty per uh eighty seven percent of uh organizations are adopting. Services provided by a multi-cloud、uh, vendors, and from this、uh, we can infer that uh, uh, with the continuous、uh, with the continuous、uh, maturation of cloud native technologies and marketplace,、uh, the future will be the era of、uh, programmable、uh, multi-cloud management service, and、uh, and. Here are also some uh inter internal factors uh including the uh like the resources constraint uh of a single cluster uh as we all know uh that a default limit of one hundred and ten pods per node and uh the maximum uh capacity of five thousand nodes uh per cluster this is the uh default limit uh of a single cluster in Kubernetes and. Uh, the the development and the development of the uh business itself, uh, take uh, uh XLine as an example. We all know that XLine server uh XLine serve as a distributed uh KV storage uh across clouds. Um, it cannot uh fully leverage its advantages uh within a single clusters and. And also, uh, the the better tolerance for a、uh, failure dominance, where、uh, multi clusters can be better toler can better, uh, tolerate, uh, cluster levels failures, and and currently, uh, Kamada only support the cross cluster management and scheduling of the stateless applications. Both Xline and Kamada believe that the future. Uh, trend uh, that the future chain will be the arrow of multi cloud、uh, multi cloud to multi cluster, and therefore, uh, the Xline and Kamada communities has have collaborate have collaborated in hopes of achieving management and scheduling the of uh stable applications in a cross cluster scenario. So, So okay, let's take a look at the challenges、uh, of the managing and scheduling stable、uh, applications in、uh, cross cluster scenarios. And let's start by looking at the two、uh, classical concepts in the cloud computing.、Uh, it's the kettle and the、uh, the pads, and which represent two different、uh, management. Approaches、uh, for services in cloud computing scenarios, and Kettle uh, represents uh, stateless uh, uh, stateless services, and they have no identity,、uh, 
and there are nothing different between the individual uh, instances and uh, when one of them uh, becomes faulty uh, we simply replace it with a, a new one and pads uh, on the other hand uh, represent uh, stable uh, services and each pad has its own unique uh, identity and each instance is unique when one of these instances encounter an issues and we need to take care of it carefully and until it recovers so then we encounter a question that what exactly a status does a stable application have in a, a single cluster and i believe there are uh, three types of the uh, status the first one is applications data uh, such as uh, state machine logs in xi or the uh, data tables or anything like that Excelsior. Um, this data uh, must be uh, persisted to a non-volatile storage to ensure they are not lost they, they in, to ensure they won't lost when the application restarts and the second it's a, a stable network identification uh, regardless of how many times a stable application is restarted the clients uh, should always be able to assess the same application instance using the same network identification and finally there are uh, finally there is the uh, the topologic relationship which includes the um, uh, dependencies and the startup sequence among the applications instance uh, for example uh, in common storage uh, clusters and such as master and slave nodes and we often require the master node to start before the slave node so kubernetes so how does Kubernetes management uh, stable applications and Kubernetes address the aforementioned, uh, aforementioned state issues by uh, introducing its uh, stable set API objects? And the uh, stable set uh, was uh, first introduced uh, in the Kubernetes 1.5 vision and become stable in the uh, 1.9 vision. And so far, uh, stable set is widely used for deploying stable applications and it provides a stable identification and persistent storage for every part it, manage, uh, it manages and it also guarantees a strict boot up sequence among the parts like uh, by using the PVC with the same name as a fixed part identity and the problem of application state persistencies is resolved and by uh, utilizing utilizing a fixed part identity along with the uh, headless service a constant DNS name is provided and resolving the issue of fixed network identification and finally by enforcing uh, strict startup and shutdown orders in the amount of parts uh, the issue of te uh, topologic relationship for stable applications is addressed so how to mean so in a, a, a cross cluster scenarios how should we maintain the state of an applications and i think uh, this question can be divided into the several uh, sub questions as follows like uh, how to uh, ensure the global consistent startup order for an applications instance across the cluster and how to ensure that uh, all applications instance across cluster have the globally unique instant identif uh, identifiers and how to address the application communication across clusters and provide global consistent network identification and how to handle updates scalings and other related functionalities uh, for stable application across uh, clusters uh, the solution to the above problems 
or require the implementation of the new Kamada APIs to enable cross-cluster stable set functionality. But since the certain implementation details regarding stable set workload in the Kamada community has yet to reach consensus, XLI uh, has adopted a two-layer operator approach uh, in the early stage. So how do we do that? Uh, let's briefly uh, introduce the Kamada and XLI operator first. So what is Kamada? Uh, Kamada, it's a Kubernetes management system which allow users to uh, deploy uh, cloud native applications among uh, several Kubernetes clusters uh, without uh, modify, uh, modifying their applications and it is compatible uh, with uh, all the Kubernetes native API and provides uh, central management. The Kamada is a uh, CNCF incubating uh, project now and the picture on the right uh, it's the architecture of uh, Kamada and as you can see here is the uh, Kamada control plan and which plays an important role of uh, multi-cluster management and uh, also the XLI operator it's a Kubernetes operator uh, which used to manage uh, single XLI cluster. An XLI is a distributed key-value uh, key storage system designed for multi-cloud scenario uh, utilizing the Curve protocol as its backend consensus protocol and it is currently uh, a CNCF SAND project. So since the design detail of the Kamada Stable Set API has not been finalized yet. We adopted a two-layer operator uh, to uh, uh, approach, it, uh, approach to uh, manage the uh, Stable uh, Application XLI across the cluster. And the diagram above uh, illustrates the overall architecture where an XLI uh, where an XLI cluster controller uh, is deployed on the Kamada control plane and the corresponding XLI operators uh, are deployed on the member cluster below. So uh, how to deploy a, uh, how to deploy a distributed uh, system uh, in a single cluster? So uh, a common practice is a common practice for deploying distributed uh, application cluster. It's in a, a, a single cluster environment. Let's take uh, etcd and as an example. So there are two steps. The first one is uh, the the bootstrap, boot, uh, bootstrap, uh, bootstrap. So it will create a C node for the etcd with the initial cluster state set to new and specify uh, a unique uh, uh, initial uh, cluster token. And the second stage is the scale out stage. So uh, it will execute member add on the C cluster to update the cluster network top logic and then start a new uh, etcd nodes. And the initial cluster in the new nodes are uh, reflect to the to uh, reflects the uh, updated network topologic uh, with uh, initial cluster state set to uh, existing and as you can see and in a, a single uh, cluster scenarios deploying a cluster dynamically uh, has the following uh, characterize and the first one is the logic for deployment and the scaling is con consistent and deployment logic aliens with the reconcile uh, semantics and pods are studied one after another within a single cluster meeting the semantics of the single node change um, but uh, but there are some uh, problems until the multi-cluster deployment situations and in the uh, multi-cluster scenarios, dynamic uh, deployment uh, presents some challenges, like uh, the first one is uh, there is a lack of uh, synchronization mechanism for starting pops among multiple uh, member clusters, and which could result in correctness issue 
uh, for X line as it relies on the single node change. And the dynamic deployment relies on the cluster consensus and a, a crash of uh, a member cluster may disrupt the majority and preventing the other healthy uh, member cluster from uh, continuing to deploy new nodes. So to avoid the issues mentioned above, XLI adopt the static uh, deployment approach. In this approach, during the uh, deployment process, uh, the member information of a cluster is directly added to the uh, startup uh, parameters of XLI and thereby avoiding the need to perform a manner to change operations in a cross uh, class uh, cross cluster uh, scenarios so before uh, deploying xli on kamada there are some uh, following prerequisites need to be uh, ensured the first one is to uh, deploy a member clusters and join them to the kamada and then deploy the XLI operator in each member clusters. And finally, to create multi-cluster surveys within each member clusters to facilitate communi uh, communications between different member clusters. So before starting the deployment, we need to define a, a schema uh, of the relevant resources in Kamada and apply it uh, to the Kamada API uh, server. The key part of the above uh, schema is the field of the member clusters and which describe how many replicas each uh, member clusters need. So when we apply the, this schema to the Kamada API servers and the XLI cluster controller will receive the schema and then it will uh, split it into the resources for many uh, for each member clusters and then propagate and um, propagate it to the member cluster. And upon receiving these resources, the member cluster start to launch the XLI uh, to launch the XLI uh, pods uh, until the number of the XLI pods reach the required replicas like that. Mm -hmm. Two, uh, three, okay. So, and the uh, process of the rolling update is similar, uh, require, uh, requiring only uh, modifications to the schema of the uh, corresponding resources in Kamada. And for example, changing the vision uh, from uh, XYZ, XY, uh, X point Y point Z to the uh, X Y point Y point Y. And once the XLI cluster controller detect the modification uh, detect the modification of the corresponding resources it will uh, generate uh, respective member cluster resources and proper them to the member cluster to achieve the rolling updates like that and shut down the old vision uh, XLI port and restart a new one Okay, so how to scale out, uh, how to scale out, and in the multi-cluster scenarios, and there are two different scale out under Kamada. The first one is the horizontal scale, uh, scale out, uh, like uh, adding a new member cluster and scaling out nodes on it, and the second one is the vertical scale out, uh, like a uh, scale out within uh, the existing member clusters. So let's now take a look at the horizontal scale out. And uh, to perform the horizontal scale out, simply added a description of the new member cluster such as the member four, and uh, we have the four replicas on the member four cluster, and to the res uh, bonding uh, to the corresponding uh, to the to the corresponding uh, resource in Kamala. Once the modify uh, modify uh, resources is applied to uh, Kamala, it will be uh, recognized by the 
XI cluster controller and and it will and this uh, resources will also be uh, split uh, into resources for the member cluster and propagate them to the respective uh, member cluster and upon the uh, receiving the uh, this resources the XI operator will uh, the XI operator on member 4 will beginning to execute the horizontal uh, the scale out operations and it will doing the member add and start the uh, new XLI port like this okay and uh, for the vertical uh, scale out the principle remains the same and simply uh, simply uh, modify the descriptions of the uh, corresponding member cluster in the represent uh, respective resources in Kamada for example changing the replicas from 3 to 4 and in member one cluster and once the uh, modify uh, resources is applied to Kamada and it will be uh, recognized by the XLine cluster controller and then we'll uh, split it into the resources for the member cluster and propagate them to the respective uh, member cluster once uh, receiving this resources the XLI operators on member one will begin executing the scale out operation uh, in its clusters like this okay so here is the last part of the our uh, uh, uh today's uh, sections uh, it's the summary and uh, uh, currently uh, working groups has been uh, established within the both the XLI and Kamada communities to jointly promote the management of stable applications in a multi-cluster environment using Kamada and as the uh, certain implementation details regarding to uh, regarding uh, stable set workloads uh, in the Kamada community has yet to uh, reach consensus and XLine has adopted the two layer operators approach approach in the early stage and this approach involves the explorations and experiment on development updates and other related issues laying the groundwork for the future development and design of Kamada stable set workload and we also have some future challenges like how to perceive changes in the resources of member cluster on Kamada to better support the development of our stable applications and like how to achieve of the observability uh, and monitoring of uh, stable applications across cluster on Kamada and like how to support more granular granular uh, update uh, strategies such as the partition update and how to abstract the cross cluster network and to make it independent of uh, specific network plugins uh, such as Submariner and uh, how to reduce the migration cost of migrating operators for stable applications from a uh, single cluster to multi cluster scenarios on uh, Kamada and uh, and some uh, challenges like that so uh, here's that's all the uh, uh, the sections uh, thank you for uh, uh, watching this uh, uh, share